People have told stories of the strange and supernatural for centuries. Tales of the restless dead return to haunt the living. Whispers of damned souls doing the devil's bidding on earth. Rumors of inhuman things that still hunt the old forests, untouched by the glare of modern life. There may be more to these stories than you could ever imagine. Join us tonight as we delve into the deeper truth inside these mysteries. Hello and welcome to the realms of the supernatural. How the devil are you all? I'm Andy Macker. And I'm Lee Solway and thank you very much for joining us this I'm evening. I'm back. Indeed. Finally from uh, a very bad chest infection. I'm still not 100% but I am about 80%. This is what a vegan diet gets you. Well, sickness, my, sickness, yes, sickness. even my friend Mr Raven was saying this morning when he was at my house, he says, you know, he eats ve meat and everything else, and he's healthy as anything. Well, I'm the one who gets viruses, bugs, coals. I pick everything up, and I don't eat meat. So, but it's because all all that meat is injected with so many uh, antibiotics and all that shit. You know yeah, I mean? you mean poisons? You yeah. mean? Yeah. Oh. Well, you you ingest that, so you, you're going to be immune to half the shit, aren't you? Yeah, but where does proteins come from? From the grass. Plants. Yeah. Yeah. But what's that got to do with the price of apples? So I'm eating it from first hand. When right. you eat meat, you wake it, you're, you're eating second-hand protein. Yeah, but your your grass, your leaves haven't been injected with antibiotics, have they? Yeah, I don't think they are injected with antibiotics. Well, the cows are. Yeah, they're injected with a lot of stuff, mate. Yeah. I don't and think then you, you eat that, and then that, that helps you... Yeah, well, I, I, also I, I gives understand you cancer and all the rest of it, but it, it, at least it stops <coughs> you getting a cold. Yeah, okay, anyway. Anyway. Moving on. So today's going to be like a little bit of a mixed bag. Yeah. Uh, we're still trying to arrange a date to get the girls on from uh, Vodka and Ghost. Looking forward to that. Um, it's just difficult to do it with fucking time zones and that. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course it is. Um, that is coming shortly. Hopefully next weekend that. I think that it will happen next weekend. Yeah, I'm really, hopefully next weekend we're going to be chapped to the girls. So obviously I don't know when this show will go out, but oh, my, maybe even by the time this show goes out we might have even spoken to them. Yeah. So bear that in mind. Um, we will be doing a live... Hoping to do a live episode. Um, live show next yeah, week. Yeah, that, so that'll be, hope. what, what date are we thinking for that? Are we thinking? Uh, what's, it, what's it today? Sixth. The 13th? Yeah, 13th. Saturday the 13th, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Saturday the 13th. So what we'll do is, we'll do it on, we'll do it on YouTube, I think, before, didn't we? Yeah. So we'll probably do it on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, but the, the information will be on Facebook and we'll probably post up there an hour before we go on just to make sure people know the yeah. different time zones, yeah. you know, when it's happening because obviously that's an issue with us being in the UK. And um, we'll just do the odd stories, a bit of rant and some Q&As afterwards, can't we? Yeah. You know, that's good. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants Anyone to ask me any questions or Lee, any, any questions, you know, just shout out and uh, we'll answer them to our best ability. Anyone that's seen us or do the live episodes before, we, we normally do that don't we? we normally answer questions as we go have yeah. a bit of a laugh on yeah. that you yeah, bit, no, don't, take it, banter. don't take it too serious so no, of course we don't now, there is a live if you haven't seen the live episode it is up on youtube uh so you can go there and subscribe while you're there right so when we've done this new facebook page it does give you the option on there to review right and obviously a lot of people don't have access to um itunes or apple podcast as it's now known for whatever reason uh so some people have been leaving reviews on the Facebook page, which is, mm. you know, um, fantastic. It's just another option, you know. Where, like I said before, wherever you show your appreciation for us, fantastic. Yeah, so absolutely. This is just another place. So James has said the uh, he's given us. I think, I think they're all. I don't know if it's out. It says out of five, so presumably they are out of five stars. So James has left a review on there. Thank you very much, uh, Nathaniel. Thank you very much. Uh, BJ Wallace, thank you very much, and Sophie, so thank you very much for that, and also Kirk. So yep. they, they've left reviews on there so far, right. so thank you very much for that. Uh, on the actual iTunes itself, we do have a review on there this week from Sean, who says, five stars, first and foremost, he says, hi, and how the devil are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, love listening to you guys when I'm at work or relaxing at home. I rarely get into the topics of the strange deaths at the canals. 
uh, I see what's happening in Bristol, and then all of a sudden it stops, and everyone is gradually forgotten about it. Uh, just on that, we're uh, actually going to do another show on that because there's yeah, been we're, some we're, more we're, stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, there's going to be there? some more stuff um, but happening he's, he's, isn't there? He is right. It is being kept out of the papers. Yeah, of course it is. It would be, wouldn't it? In Manchester, so to speak. Yeah. So, Anyway, guys, keep up what you're doing. I think your podcast is one of the best out there. Uh, thank you very much from Bristol. So, yeah, thank you very well, Thank you. I'm actually in Bristol a couple of times delivering. So, yes. nice, beautiful place. Nice place to go. Busy, but nice place. So you've got some haunted... I picked out... Um, I was uh, debating with th- this week to do what, what kind of bits we're going to do today. And I thought, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to do some... Uh, the top ten of the most haunted churches in the world. It seems paradoxical that a church should be haunted, but... Why why, sh- why shouldn't it be? Why should it not be haunted? Because someone's died there. Hmm? There's no one's... Well, unless you're really unlucky and you've died in a graveyard. But generally mm. speaking... Um, most people don't die. In... Now I can see how a battlefield can be haunted. Um, you know, like yeah, uh, obviously Gettysburg or you know up here in Stamford, whatever. But I can, I can see that. I can see uh, how a uh, you know like a ship that's been in some war zone mm. and been and lost lives, or, or even a trawler. Mm. Uh, and obviously, just up here, we've got um, the National Fishing Heritage Centre. Um, and there's a trawler actually docked there called the Ross Tiger. Yeah. And it's a trawler. She's been to sea, you know, many, many times and there's been many accidents on the ship, as you can imagine. And the ghost of the skipper still haunts the vessel. Mm. And actually when people say, because you can go aboard this ship. I don't know if they still let you, did I? No, isn't it half underwater now? Well, it's, it's actually... It's listing, isn't it? But I don't it, think it's... The cat touch yeah. it. It's actually... I think half of it's underwater No, that's now. the Lincoln Castle, isn't it? Is that Lincoln Castle? Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Ross Tiger. But I don't know if they let you on it anymore. But they used right. to let you... As part of the museum, they used to let you go on, on board the ship. But the problem was, people used to go on and uh, this guy that looked like, uh, you know, Captain Bird's eye, the old, uh, the typical yeah, yeah. You know, fisherman with a big, big, big bushy beard, beard yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Southwester on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, patch over the eye and all that. <coughs> He used to um, greet people on the ship and then start talking to them about the ship and they'd ask him questions and all the rest of it. And then they'd come off the ship and they'd speak to the tour guides and that. Um, and they'd say, you know, that, that mm. guy you've got on the ship's fucking fantastic. He really looks the part. And they'd say, mm. there is no guide on the ship. Yeah. And they'd say, well, who's that? And they'd, then they'd tell him it was the ghost of the sk- skipper. Like, so I don't know if there's still people uh, allowed on that ship or not, but... I'm not sure. He's still there. So yeah, there's some parts where they, they, don't, they don't want to leave they're happy to stay where they well yeah he obviously enjoyed that ship and it was his passion it. whatever yeah. but but that's what I mean that's a, that's what I say about the, the graveyard makes very little well, sense again it's, it's not usually the graveyard it's the grounds mm. you, know, the, you know the church would have been there but before the church it could have been a, a monastery and most of the churches most of the hauntings you get uh, 80% would be like monks and priests oh, and uh... nuns and you know like round here, we got round here, you know, Nuns Corner. You know, that used to be a monastery, like, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? So that's all nuns and, mon- and headless horsemen and stagecoaches, and you love all them. It's a, a replay. Certain times it's replay. Boom, boom, boom. So, yeah, but I've got, I, I think I've got, again, some people will come on the great cemetery. It's the grounds, it's the memory of the hour, or, you know, it's. They, they, they're there. Uh, and I've got 10 of the best. Well, I th- hope I've got 10 of the best. The best, the most haunted ones anyway. That's and these are all around the world? Or? All around the world, yeah. All around the world. Uh, right, so I'm going to start off with uh, number 10. Uh, this is uh, Chapel of the Cross in Mansdale in Mississippi. Okay. Uh, good old USA, of course. Uh, within the grounds of this Gothic church is the ghost of a woman whose husband-to-be was killed in a duel in a few days before their wedding. Oh, dear. Right. They're not the best time to pick a duel, is no, it? No, no. It's obviously no. Her ghost has been seen lying over his gravestone, sobbing inconsolably. Odd giggling has been heard in the chapel, and blood stains appear and disappear on the stone floor. I mean, that's, that's happened many times. I've mm. heard I mean, so many stories about that. People have also witnessed strange apparitions wandering the grounds and passing through doors to the church. Number nine, Old Rock Church. This is in St. Olaf in Texas. Uh, This rather pretty little church has been abandoned since 1917 and is miles away from any major towns. 
Unexplained voices have been heard in the pews. Eerie lights have been seen in the church at night. Even a ghost choir singing hymns has been heard wafting on the breeze from the church. And the organ has also been played by ghostly figures when it's been totally deserted. A rather sinister addition to our ten haunted churches. I remember a video that I've seen that, that, that century, uh, last year. I think it was last year. Was, I found this one on YouTube. And apparently these guys, these two, uh, I think two people in America, they went to his church and there was video, it was camcorded. Mm, and went yeah, in right, there, yeah. you know, and they went in through the, the tower and the only way out, that they couldn't get out this way. The only way they could get out was through the pew of the church. Anyway, all of a sudden it was a dark and they said, what's going on? And they saw a hooded figure at the, the, um, at the organ playing. And oh, they was yeah. crapping themselves. Now, was it real? I thought, is it made up this? Is it really real oh, or what? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. They, oh, what are we going to do? And, and they had to run past this hooded figure on the organ to get to the door. And it was, oh, there was screaming. Was, you could tell it was really frightened. But I thought, oh, if that's real, oh, they're great actors. Yeah. You know. I mean, that, I mean, that organ music playing on its own is creepy. It's just creepy sounding music, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, hey, what, I mean, what what you done? Would you have stayed there when uh say hello there and taps on his shoulder and plays a song? <laughs> Which is gold legged it. I don't know. Would you have thought it's it's not a ghost, it's actually somebody there in, in just playing as a, a phantom. You know? I feel well, if you had I don't a know, video if you was in you saw a guy in there and it, you know, it was nobody in you went in the church, nobody was there, you went up to the tower, come down and the it's only way there. out is that doorway. And all of a sudden, some guy's playing the, the, the yeah. organ there. Well, if you've got a video camera, try and get it on. I, I, I'll, I'll, try, I'll, get, I'll send you the link, Lee. Yeah. I'll send you a link. And I'd, try and film, I'd try and film it, sure. Yeah, yeah. well, you could tell it. The, the, well, one of the guy was crying. He yeah. was just crying. He was crying his eyes out. Anyway, number eight is Westminster Abbey in mm. London. A lot of lost souls there. Yes. Having stood in the same place since the 6th century... It's not surprising it has been fair sure of spooks over the years. While being expanded and, and altered, the floor level has been lowered, which is why the ghost of a monk has been spotted floating along, not touching the floor. He's known as Father Benedictus, and often he, they can see him gliding through the cloisters at around 5 to 6 p.m. His ghostly form seems quite solid. And over the years, many visitors have had in-depth conversations with him before he floats off and disappears. So now they're interacting. Mm. So this ghost here is, well... But it, they say he's solid. Around. You know, he's not like a... He's not see-through. He's not... He is a solid... He's a solid person. Yeah. yeah, so he's solid. Yeah. Apart from his floating. Yeah, well, yeah. Which gives well, him away. Yeah. Possible, yeah. Uh He's a, apparently, they said he's a nice, polite man, apparently. So if they get too freaked out, there's also the tomb of the Unknown Warrior, a memorial to the soldiers who died in World War I. The, un un the unidentified body of a soldier from the battlefields of France lies underneath it, and when the abbey is quiet enough, a ghostly soldier appears, head bowed for a few minutes before disappearing into thin air. Hmm... Mm. Right, number seven, Saint Louis, Saint Louis, uh, Saint Louis, Saint Louis, sorry, Saint Louis Cathedral, New Orleans in Louisiana. In 1769, a rebellion by French settlers in New Orleans were crushed by the Spanish, and six ringleaders were caught and executed by the firing squad. To intimidate the remaining rebels, the bodies of the six men were left to rot unburied in the church grounds until a few days later, they were sneaked away from the Spanish and finally entombed in the cemetery. Apparently, these tortured souls wander the grounds as revenge for their hideous final days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can like that as well, mate, definitely. They, they, obviously, they've been killed in... Um, a horrible way, yeah. tortured way. Which seems to result... In a replay. Yeah. A kind of goes, a, yeah. That energy's harnessed there for, for a while. Right, number six, St. Bartholomew's, the Great Smithfield in London. Nice. St. Bartholomew's, the Great stands on the grounds that have seen Christian worship since 1143, and it's full of ghostly action. A monk called Rahir, or whose tombs nearby, roams the Lady Chapel, and apparently his ghost always appears 
on the 1st of July at 7am from the vestry and he has a stroll through the church. A date for your diary there then. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. There's also been sightings of a clergyman in a black gown delivering a sermon from the pulpit. That'd be a mm. <laughs> Yeah, great. Uh, also, a spectral white lady appearing, and worst of all, a black shape that drifts the corridors, radiating evil. Mm. Now, what's mm. that mean? Could be a good person, but could yeah. shit yourself. Well, yeah, most people that are going to see well, it's evil. It's a, a black, ghost it's is going to feel some sort yeah. of uh, yeah, it's not evil it's anxiety or whatever. Yeah, so they're going to put something. two and two together, aren't they? Whatever yeah. happens there. Now, obviously, I was going to go on about Borley Rectory, but remember, Borley Rectory has now been taken down. It's but Borley Church still stands. Okay, so I thought I'd add this because definitely Borley Rectory was one. My it was my number one, but because it's not there anymore. Uh, I've put in for number five, Borley Church. And again, sitting in the grounds where the famous haunted rectory in is lies Borley Church. Uh, there has been unexplained lights that flitter around the church. Organ music plays by itself at all times. Um, the, well, obviously, when there's nobody there, a ghostly monk has been sitting in a pew in the church itself by you know by itself. Uh, while there has been paranormal investigators, uh, yeah, probably waiting for a sermon to start. All this bizarre activity isn't surprising due to the church being near to one of the most haunted places in Britain. I think it's most, it was one of the most haunted places in the world. Mm. Well, uh, it, that's it. You know, I mean, yeah. we, didn't, didn't we, well, we did a show on we, it, but we, we did a show, didn't we? It won't. I'd love to go to that place. I don't, I'd love it, to go I don't think it was convincing because it sounded, it, and a lot of it sounded like it was that woman that lived there that was causing a lot of the. Well, I mean, you had also um, eyewitness accounts, uh, mostly from lorry drivers mm. to the bypass there. They also they were staying there sometimes, going past it, and lots of load, load of monks and shapes and all that stuff. So it was eyewitness, you know, all these. Obviously, it was a monastery, so there's going to be a lot of activity still there. Right? No, no, it was Borley. Stocksbridge as well. So yeah. The well, drivers you yeah. See well, yeah, Stocksbridge, but it was also Borley was as well. Uh, the also, there's also many um, stories of uh, did one bring out of the the one of the house near the the the, the rectory. Uh, there was a it just kept being broken glass. Was that one in Borley? Was one in Borley glass. rectory? Yeah. And they brought barrows out, barrows and barrels of where the bottle where the glass where the bottle was coming from. So, yeah, a very, a very uh, haunted place. Anyway, number four, the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Uh, it said even presidents can be uh, can be ghosts in this massive building in Washington, Woodrow Wilson. Pre- sorry, Woodrow Wilson, president from 1913 to 1921, um, died in 1924 and is the only president interred in Washington, D.C., in the cathedral, uh, his ghost wanders the hall, tapping his cane against the walls, probably checking its structural sound since it was only finished in 1990. There's also a basement where a library fire in 1946 left tortured souls still trapped. Uh, many a visitor there has had the feeling they're being watched, with a feeling of an extreme uneasiness thrown in it for good measure. Yeah can see that definitely right number three st nicholas church in pluckley in the uk right situated in one of the most haunted places in england st nicholas church is famous for the red lady ghost we did this didn't we we did yes uh obviously lady daring who wanders the graves looking for her missing baby um she was buried in three lead coffins to prevent her decay this is probably why she's still active now in the church itself. Strange knocking sounds drift up from uh, from under at the, at the night, accompanied by uh, the odd flickering lights when it's empty. Added to this, the inside of the church is said to be haunted by a woman in a 20, 20th century clothing. So you've got a mixture in that one. Number two is the Most Holy Trinity Church in Brooklyn in New York. Brooklyn. Yeah. In this massive church, it covers an entire city block, roaming uh, many a ghost. The most famous is George Stites, 
a bell ringer who was once ma- who, sorry who was murdered on the stairway leading to the bell tower. The bloody handprints of George and his murderer still stain the walls leading to the bell tower, and the bells ring unexpectedly from time to time. Uh, also, there are loads of underground tunnels leading from the church that only the brave venture into. That'd be great one, that going down there. It's all tunnels. I'd love to get in the tunnels, yeah. Absolutely brilliant, mate. Mind number one, though, this. The Church of St. Mary the Virgin, hmm, Clophill in the UK. This church is in ruins t- uh, today uh, because of a new church, but well, actually a new church be- is being built nearby. It was uh, built in 1848, and there have been lots of strange incidents occurring there since then. Ghostly monks, nuns, and have been uh, seen wandering the grounds before disappearing into thin air, and rumours of devil worship and black magic in the church itself. Adding to that, body snatchers roam the grounds, digging up bodies. Very nice. Mm. Well, that was a big, big thing then, wasn't it? Yeah, body snatching. So that's my top ten of the most haunted to churches. Get a lot of money for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wonder who paid them for them. So it's, it's absolutely Medical money. research, wasn't there? There's, there's a guy in this a church in Sheffield, didn't there, where they, the the reverend still roams because he was selling the bodies, right? And he still roams the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can do ghost tours there now. Oh well, well I'll find I'll find out a bit more about that. Um. I just want to say a big thank you and a hello to everybody listening on the Paranormal UK Radio Network. Yes, hello, hello, hello. Don't forget to come and check out the podcast. Uh, there are many available wherever you get your podcasts from. Yeah. Um. Right, I've got some stories that were left over from the episode I did last week. Right. Um, which was the strange, on you know, strange tales, unexplained tales. Yep. And I've got some here, which... I think you'll find interesting. Let's have a look. Right. 13 ironclad warships of Britain's Mediterranean fleet under the command of Admiral Sir George Tyrone steamed out of Beirut on routine manoeuvres on the morning of the 22nd of June, 1893. Soon after 2pm, just off Tripoli, Sir George, from his flagship, HMS Victoria, ordered the formation of two columns, six cables apart. Six cables is uh, 1,200 yards. Right, okay. So not very far, right? No, between warships. Yep. The Admiral, a highly respected naval tactician, then gave a strange and fateful order. He signalled the lead ship and those following to reverse direction. By turning towards one another. Right. Leading the other column uh, in the ship, the HMS Camperdown, Rear Admiral Albert Hastin Markman saw the columns were too close together to turn safely. So imagine the two columns and the three ships in a row, yep. and then they're turning, or oh, whatever, seven ships on one side, and what was the other? I think it was 13, right? So they're turning in on themselves. And they're only a thousand yards apart. Mm. Well, you know the size of a warship. Yeah. <laughs> um, You've got much to play with there, are you, really? No. So, but, but this is what I mean about this guy. Listen, I mean, you get to this point, surely, you know, that, you, know you get that command, and if you think it's unsafe, you don't do it. But well, anyway, he questioned the signal, and Sir George confirmed the order. The ships turned, and the camper down crashed into the bow of the Victoria, which sank in less than 15 minutes. Of the 649 men aboard, 358, including the Admiral, went down. As the ship was sinking, Sir George said to his flag lieutenant, It's entirely my fault. At the same time, some 2,000 miles away, in Tyrone's fashionable London home in Eaton Square, his wife, Clementina, was given a reception. Right. Suddenly, to all astonishment of the guests who knew he was at sea, the tall figure of Sir George appeared and walked among them. As they stepped aside to make way, he simply vanished. The tragic news of the Victoria and their admiral's death did not reach London until some days later. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, 
So he's gone there to, to you know to say bye bye or whatever. Mm. But I mean, does it sound? Does that sound? I mean, obviously that must be a suicide. Yeah, must be. That's weird shit. That man. It's a weird one. So I don't know how you explain that one. Really, yeah. it's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. So I've got one. Uh, you know, the only other one I was on about that uh, that couple going to that church was a photo, a phantom ghost. Mm. I've actually got it on here. Found it. It's a real ghost caught on tape, and he plays the piano in the church. Uh, why are you always searching that? I'm going to let them listen to this. See, obviously, they can find the link on the YouTube. I'll let the listeners listen to this. And see how shit scared he is. We'll put that. One. We'll put it on the hangout, can't we? Yeah, I'll put it on the hangout. For Christmas, on. Tracy Welch brought us the yeah, gift we'll of a ghost plane. Uh, yeah. This is Jake. This is Steve. This is where the guys go in. They're doing the go in the church. Go to the bell tower. Come down. There's nobody in the church. When they come down to the bell tower. The fan, the, the ghost on the, on the organ. Pretty cool. I'd be scared shit, but I don't know. I'm I'm scared. Yeah, it's getting pretty scary already. Oh, I'm doing this. 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 I'm so they're inside the church now, first. there's nothing there. Nothing, there's nothing there. see the shape, we open the door and this is just, just see the shape on the fucking piano. Oh, see my mama. The only way out is that way. And that's the uh, audio. Also, you can watch that on on YouTube. You actually see the footage. Well, that was the uh, that was the uh, scary experience. That wasn't it. Oh, yeah, I would have stayed. I would have stayed. People said, "Oh yeah, you're saying that now because you're not there and that," but I would have stayed. Absolutely, stayed. But again, it's uh, Easter alone, isn't it? Yeah, Easter alone, mate. Easter alone. Uh, any more stories, Lee? Well, I don't know. I mean, that bit where he says, uh, I want to see my mama or something, that sounds is, I mean, a bit, really, a little bit corny, don't is it? Is it cut them out? No, I mean, you know, is it like, is it, I mean, the good actors, yeah. or is it, fuck, is it, is it really real? I mean, obviously, you, you can watch it on YouTube, you know, just, uh, just, uh, type in ghost playing piano in church. It'll come on there, and uh, you'll see them go in the church and they're messing about, and yeah, scared. You can tell they're scared. Um, but when they, come out of the other door, you know, the, the, there's nothing in there when they go in, but when they go for the door, also the piano starts playing. So, again, it's... Well, this story is a, is, a, is a bit of a weird one. This is from the 17th century. It happens down in Cornwall. Right, yep. It says, 
According to the legend, right, late one stormy night, the inhabitants of a small Cornish village spotted a ship floundering in the shallow waters nearby. Keen to see if the ship would wreck, the villagers hurried to the beach. Because anything that was spilled and washed up on shore right. was fair game. You've got to report that now. Why? You no, know, if something washed up on shore, hmm. that you, you've got to report that. You're not allowed to take it. If you take it, then that's classed as theft. Why? I don't know. It's just it's the law now. Obviously, in them days, it was different because you know there weren't so many laws anyway. But well, that is the law now. Do you remember that container ship that washed up years ago on the on the south coast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a lot of that stuff there was um, usable. That was inside the containers, but they wouldn't let anybody touch them, and basically, it just went to ruin. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so they hurried to the beach. Because uh, any spilled goods that washed up on the shore would be theirs for the taking. All stood there eagerly awaiting to see what the night storm would bring right. to profit them. Okay. As the local people stood watching the ship, they could discern the figure of only one man upon its deck. There appeared to be no other crew present. The enormous vessel was being sailed by just one person. Suddenly, the figure threw himself into the raging sea and began swimming with ferocity, uh, ferocious speed towards the beach, arriving in no time at all. The startled spectators were amazed to see the enormous man with dark black eyes rin- rise out of the water. As he strode towards them, his enormous size became evident. He must have stood at almost seven feet tall and was as wide as two men. Mm. The mysterious stranger Mm. marched towards the crowd. He pulled a shawl from an old woman's shoulders, causing her to fall to the ground. Wrapping the material around his shoulders, he then grabbed a young woman, gripped her tightly around the waist. He leapt onto a large house belonging to one of the villagers and rode off into the darkness. Sorry. He leapt onto a large horse belonging to one of the villagers. He leapt onto a large horse belonging to one of the villagers and rode off into the darkness. Must have been a big horse. Yeah, big horse. Understandably, the locals were highly perturbed by this bizarre occurrence. They were shitting themselves. Yeah. It's fair to say. The stranger may have disappeared from sight. pervasive. The next day, the locals awoke to discover that the stranger was still with them. He had quartered himself in the home of a young woman he had abducted the previous night. There he remained living for several years. Throughout the time, Cruel Coppinger, as he became known, exerted a terrifying control over the family of the girl and over the wider village. Uh, Coppinger means someone in the old days. That that name used to mean someone that lived on a hill. Ah, right, okay. So, presumably, this house stood on a hill. I don't. I, I, I take it from that name. That that's what it was. He forced people to work for him, and anyone who disobeyed his orders or sought to oppose him had felt the hard end of his vengeful vengeful wrath. The pirate smuggler smuggler grew fond. Mm of beheading his enemies and using their grisly remains to warn others not to defy him. Cruel Coppinger dominated the entire village, attaining such a stranglehold over the people to all intents and purposes the villagers became his slaves. Right. His ability to subdue the entire village meant that it took quite some time for the news of his appearance to reach authorities. It was the fact HM Revenues the first detected his presence. They had been investigating an extensive smuggling operation in the area, and it soon became apparent that the cruel Coppinger was the mastermind behind the criminal enterprise. He was conscripted the entire village into his endeavours, forcing men, women and children to dig tunnels, collect contraband and watch for authorities. The demon pirate's reign of terror eventually came to an end when a number of armed revenue officers 
tracked him down and pursued him to the beach. It was the same beach which had brought the cruel Coppinger to Cornwall in the first place. There he jumped into a small fishing boat that had been left on the shore and rowed off in at tremendous speed into the darkness of the night. He was never seen again. Hmm. Sounds like a nice chap. Yeah. Yeah, my nice chap. Well, in them days, they, just, they, they didn't bother me. Well, they, I've got one here from the sun. I, I, find this, I, I find this quite fascinating. I think it's like the bollocks, but again, the sun. Science is trying to, you know, they were trying to take it over. It's called, it's cool. It, it's all, you know, like the saying, it's all in the mind. They're saying, it's ghoul in the mind. Mm. The real re reasons why some people see ghosts, according to the so-called experts. Uh, many people claim to have witnessed ghosts and ghouls. Uh, they, they are going to explore some of the possible causes for all these supernatural things. Cold spots, creaking sounds and spooky figures, whether or not paranormal realm exists, is an issue that has been debated for centuries. In a world filled with science and reason, these hauntings can be often boiled down to simple explanations. Yep. And it has nothing to do with the supernatural. Okay. A waking dream and insomnia. Ever get that feeling when you're awake, but you have a terrifying dream and your body is frozen. Okay. This is called a waking dream. Or sleep paralysis. Yeah. Okay. Sleep paralysis. Paralysis. Uh, you are in a hypnotic state when your mind is alert, but your body is still asleep. And it can be associated with sleep paralysis. Joe Nicholl, a senior research fellow for the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, it's a big word, isn't it? Mm. Which promotes scientific inquiry and critical investigation of paranormal claims. He believes ghosts are all in the mind. It's mm. rubbish. There's nothing wrong with being a skeptic, right? Mm. And this and Joe Nickel crops up all the time in this shit. Yeah, but, yeah, I know, mate. I know. But he goes too far. Yeah, he start. He goes beyond skepticism and goes into making excuses for shit. Yeah, and that's where he crosses the line. I, I'd like it's to, all right I, to be skeptical. Yeah, and just say I don't know mm. what this is, but mm. I don't think it's this, right? I'd like to see his bank account and what kind of house no. he lives in. Well, then you'd know. Just follow the money. Anyway. He told the son online. Well, what, well in the just before you carry on, yeah, it's skept like because there was a scientist the other day, and he was trying to say there's no such thing as a supernatural. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, to some extent, I, I thought, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll go along mm. with that. But then the Big Bang itself is a supernatural event. Why? Just by its definition. Well, what? Why? Why? Why, is, why was it a Big Bang? Why has it got to be a Big Bang? Well, there was a Big Bang, but that in oh, that well, in itself... Well, bang will, is it? The Big Bang is a supernatural event because as far as we're aware, or science is aware, it only happened the once. They don't know why. Yeah, well, okay. So that, by its very defini definition, is a supernatural event, isn't it? Uh, well, not really, And no. this guy's a scientist uh, who's looking into all this. Well, you see, there's a scientist. They are the good scientists and the other scientists who just take the money and leg it and they just... Um, well, I mean, well you know, there's, there's scientists a, who want to give out the truth out there. Out, out yeah, but here. it's about grants, isn't it? I yeah. mean, I was looking at a study, yeah, some, you, yeah. something really mundane the other day, yeah. and, and this uh, guy basically said, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done on that, but we can't guarantee grants for that. Yeah. So, basically, once anything to do with super, like, great, like, like the paranormal stuff like that, yeah. It was um, it's just something mundane, but he couldn't get, he wouldn't be able to get guaranteed grants for that. Mm. So the university we worked for, whoever it was, said, oh, "I'll do this instead." So mm. he's working on something he didn't really want to do. Yeah, but that's where the money is. So the government buy that sort of shit. Mm. But the fact is, the Big Bang, whichever way you want to look at it, right? It's a supernatural event. Doesn't mean that there was a super like. It doesn't mean there was a great. Um, being who who created who decided that it was going to happen, blah blah blah. But it's by definition a supernatural event, and so scientists has proven that basically. So the, for this guy to come out and say, "No, oh, no, it's all all supernatural shit's bullshit." Well, mm. we can't do that because you've just you just by your own criteria prove that this has just happened. It's supernatural. So mm. why can't more supernatural things happen? And remember, paranormal just means, I mean. Para is, you know, basically 
means something that's not known yet. Paranormal. So it's something that we just haven't yeah, discovered yet. Normal. You know what I mean? It's not normal. Yeah. So it's not, well, we, what, what we perceive as normal to other people is normal. But yeah. once we find out what it is, mm. then it'll become normal. But at the moment, it's paranormal. And, and there's a lot of things in the world that go on. And it's it's undeniable these things that happen yeah, around the world. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot of people out there who want to keep the truth. And then they want the people to know what's really happening out there. Mm. You know, But they know it. They've known it for many years. Uh, anyway, this, uh, this this idiot, and he is, uh, he, he said to his son online, In a waking dream state, people wake up and see a number of things. Aliens, dead people, ghosts, and associated with anything associated Nothing. with feeling, yeah, feeling right. dread. You know, you wake up, think, you think someone's in the room, someone's watching you, or you know, you've got that feeling, haven't you? Uh, they'll often see the entity coming into their room, standing by their bed, or trying to choke them, and they're not able to move, or talk, or scream, or to do anything. It's the trick of the mind. This guy's a dick. And I'll say to his face, You're a dick, right? Because this is. <laughs> it, a trick of the mind. You know, yeah, what is mind? Yeah, sleep sleep paralysis happens. You know, the, what's this the, is there. But it, what's his point? The point is, anyway, he's saying all is happening is in the mind. Yeah. You've had a bad experience. Yeah, it's, sleep paralysis, yeah. yeah. It's a trick of the mind when a mental image is being superimposed on the actual visual scene, so the imagined events seem very real. See, now, this guy... You're taking two phenomenons and mixing them up. Yeah. And then, and then trying to... He's trying, trying to, to overlay one and say, well, that's the reason that happened. He's saying it may be, the, like you just yeah, said, he's okay, not saying maybe that's this. Fair enough. He's saying this is what it is. Well, this is the problem with, with this. Yes, yeah, sleep yeah. paralysis happens. Unda- yeah. unda- you know, undoubtedly, that happens. And people, like you say, wake up. Obviously, they, they can't move, and that's mm. that's worrying straight away. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I can, I, can, I can tell you that how, yeah. how that happens. Not that's, a problem. I can understand Budget. there's high anxiety there. But yeah. you, no fucking way on this earth can two people... Wake up and see the same fucking thing at the same time. Yep. Right. Yep. And that's not sleep paralysis. Yes. I had, what he what he says and how many magazines? Yeah, I've had I've had experts as well. Yeah, experts. It so. ain't happening. Yeah. And two people driving home in you know late at night. Yep. See something they ain't asleep. No. Right. No. So his point, he's mixing up two points and trying to get. So he's doing two and two and getting five. Well, again, you know, he's supposed to be a, a in paranormal. He said the this. U.S. paranormal investigator. He's got fifty years of experience. Hang on a minute. What experience? Has he seen a ghost? Is it, what, what, what experience is he on about? He says he believes a ghost can be also an illusion produced by the brain, particularly when a person suffers from insomnia. Bullshit, mate. Well, I would say Absol- the yeah. mind is not as sharpest when we're tired. Oh, okay, yeah, you get tired, but after, after sleep, you know, it's just it builds back up again. Yeah, but is it not is it not the case that when you're tired, your body's at its lowest there, which means you are more vulnerable to the body need any sleep? Yeah, again. Well, well, the mechanisms say there's a mechanism. I know how it works, mate. See, anyone can say this shit. So I could just say to him, right? Well, there's a mechanism in your body, which we don't understand yet. Yeah. Which which yeah. protects you like a magnetic field, right? Yep. Which protects you from yeah. these things, these entities, yep. whatever. As you get tired. This shield shrinks, mm. yep. and therefore you're more exposed to these things. So when you're tired and you're at your lowest step, you're going to see these things more often. Yeah, because your, your body needs sleep. Because your eyes you, closed. Yeah, because you're, you're more. Yeah. You know the the, the veil is finnest. Yeah. It's so when, it's when how you t- can you, I mean what I've just said there right is totally. Um, but you didn't get paid for that, did you? No, but you t- it could be shit. totally made up, right? But there's no yeah. way to prove that. <laughs> there's no way to prove what he's saying. No. So, but the problem is that goes in the paper, right? And everyone that reads that. Next time someone sees a ghost, they like, say, ah, what time is it? Well, it was, uh, it was, it was night time. Wow, ah, sleep paralysis. There you go. That's it then, isn't it? Yeah. The job done. That, that is what yeah. this yeah. shit this gets guy printed. This guy knows what he's doing. He knows the exact Gets printed in order to confuse and muddy the waters. That's all when you, when you When you when you, when you sleep, when, you, when you're when really tired, when you're tired, and you're like, oh, I've got to go to sleep. You know what I mean? Here, look, tired. let me read you this, and yeah. then see how Joe Nickel fucking answers to this. Mm. I was turning around the corner when I saw a bus tearing towards me. The motorist testified before before the police. The lights on top and the bottom deck and the headlights were full on, but I could see no sign of crew or passengers. I yanked my steering wheel hard over and mounted the pavement sidewalk, scraping the roadside wall. The bus just vanished. Ah, well, okay. The motorist made the report to the local authorities in North Kensington, London, in the mid-1930s. May have been drunk, 
hallucinating or dreaming at the wheel when he had his accident. Again, mate. But if he was, so were hundreds of other motorists who complained of being forced off the road by a phantom bus careering around the corner of St. Mark's Road into Cambridge Gardens near Ladbrook Grove Underground Station. After one fatal accident, the local coroner took the evidence of the apparition and discovered that dozens of local residents claimed to have seen the spectral double-decker. Hmm. In fact, there had been more than... more. The, the, in fact, there had been many ordinary accidents, several of them fatal, at the notorious junction. Eventually, the local council straightened the road there and the accident rate was greatly reduced. Thereafter... There were no report, no more reports of the ghostly red bus. Mm. But those people there are seeing a bus, right? Oh no! According to this this guy, they've got a, a vivid ma- imagination. Yeah, there was asleep. Yeah, there was asleep. Yeah, or the lion. The problem is right, and you know, obviously, he makes a career out of this. But well, this is what I'm saying. There's no, but you can't. Who actually pays these people to spare that bullshit? Well, people buy. Oh, well, mag- no. People buy his magazine, don't they? Well, I mean, and people believe it. People want to believe it. People want to believe that there's nothing. No, no, strange. No, 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 that's wrong. No, I'm saying this guy here. Um, he obviously he's been paid to say that. Oh, it's, 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 there's many, it's many, many. There's that. There's that. Um, doctor. I think he's a psychotherapist or some shit. Dr. Chris Fen- French. Oh, is that uh, many of them? Like, and he, many he, of them, like, he goes on them. telly and I, he's, I remember a debate he did about Rendlesham and he tried to say that these uh, airmen had seen the lighthouse. Yeah. Um, But that's it. As far as he's concerned, it was a lighthouse and nothing more. But the fact that they saw it at the East Gate, West Gate, you know, doesn't doesn't seem to enter his head. Okay, so, yeah, okay, the people looking towards the lighthouse, they saw it, mm. but what about the people looking away from the lighthouse and saw the same same object? Yeah. But that was the lighthouse. Well, how can it be? Because if you look in that direction, you ain't never going to see the lighthouse. No. Right? No. So, but he's on there, and he doesn't want to wear any of the evidence because he's made his mind up, it was a lighthouse. It can't be anything else. Yeah, because someone's told him to say that. Yeah. Obviously. You know, but that's the line that go orders. down. And it, they go down it to the point of stupidity. And it's it's... Well, sleep paralysis absolutely, yep, yeah, happens, yeah. And of course, people feel dread yeah. and all the rest of it, and people, yeah, the, the old back syndrome where people think experience. people think they're horrible getting experience. choked and all that because yeah. because yeah. the body is what's doing what the body yeah. does. So, so maybe you're not what, supposed what, to be awake. To me, why ain't the body awake? But you are. I mean, obviously, you are. But your body, part of your body, isn't because you're not moving. Yeah, it's just a know? miscalculation. But the problem with that is that that is where that stops now. I've had that one. I mean, I've never had it. Um, I, I don't know if you were, you've had that kind of happen to you. Like. I've never had sleep paralysis. I've had it. I've had, I, I haven't had it. I had. I've had. But not. I, I could move, but not on my body. And I can tell you that when I and saw. And there was something on the wall, everything... like a face. And it, was tra- it was talking to me, and it was weird. And I've told my friend in London about it, but um, I turned my head, and I, but I couldn't move one side. And I wasn't frightened. I looked up, and I, I, got, I could move my eyes. I saw his face on the wall. It was trying. It was talking to me, but I just couldn't stand it. It was like a, um, it was going to gibberish. Gibberish. I couldn't stand it, and it disappeared. But I've never had anything. You no, know, I was horrible like that. It? But uh, I do know that when you, when you go to sleep, you, you the real you goes into the astral realms, and you go obviously you go do whatever you're gonna do, and your body sleeps. You don't. The real you don't sleep. You don't need sleep. Your body needs sleep because it's a it's a fantastic piece of equipment. It's a chemical biological suit. So and it needs the sleep. That's how, anyway, to recharge, when you when you leave your body and you go into the astral realms and you go and do whatever, you're still tied, you're still connected with the body by a beam of light, either through the third eye or through your cock. No. <laughs> through your battery, your your belly, your be- your battery. Uh, you're through there, from your belly button, and it's still there. So it, some um, spiritualist mediums are saying sometimes when they see uh, these people of that, you know, obviously, when you're in the astral realms, they know people who are still alive. They've still got this uh, light coming from their body. They're still attached to the body. So still no tethered to this tethered. world. Yeah, they're still... Once that tether is gone. But this body, I believe... And, and uh, this person said years ago to me, what happens is when, they, when you go in the spirit world, that energy from you goes down to your body. And this is why you wake up in the morning feeling refreshed. 
because it, it, it's energized it's like a battery you go in there and you're you're in a higher uh, frequency place so that radiates down into your body and that's why you but you know obviously sleep paralysis for me is that maybe it's a jump you're supposed to go back in the body a certain time oh, so I'm going back in and, it, and there's just a two second gap and bang yeah it, it's, it's a, just it's, a, a, it's just a crossover pair it's an adjustment yeah. that but it, and it, it, I reckon it happens. But it obviously, yeah, your mind's woke up, but your body ain't woke up yet, whatever. But yeah, that happens, and obviously, the old hag syndrome is synonymous with I've that. I've never seen that. Where does this old hag syndrome, is it always an old hag? Or well, is it something else? people just sinister? feel, it depends what culture it is, but people essentially feel a weight on top of them. It could be a grotesque goblin type thing over ah, here. It's a old hag, right, Germany, yeah. that sort of thing. So you get yeah. a nightmare from, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's a mare, but it's... It's, you know, that's, you know, that's explainable. Mm. That's explainable. So at that point is explainable. But then when people see, and again, when more than one person sees the same thing, that doesn't, mm. you can't just use sleep paralysis for no, that. No. And that's where they, that's where they go. They go, yeah. oh, it's all sleep paralysis. But mm. then when you take them out, it's like what I say about, um, Melstrom Air Force Base. I would get that. I would get that doctor, uh, Chris French, I think his name is, and I would say to him, "Okay, so Rendlesham, yeah, you know it pretty well." Mm. And he'd say, "Well, you'd have to know the case if he's going to argue it to yeah. that point. He has to know the case." And I'd just say to him, "Right, so you got these Air Force men at the gate, and over a couple of nights, I saw this craft. It was dripping molten metal. You know, the shape of an eye. It went across to the uh, well. We weren't supposed to have nuclear warheads then, or whatever it was. So yeah. it went across to the missile silo, if you like, the bunker." And it made them in there and all that shit. And I'm talking about Rendlesham, of course. And he'd say, yeah. And I'd say, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not. I'm talking about Melstrom Air Force Base. Mm. Be- this is the problem, see, because you've got two now, two mm. cases, yep. right? Almost identical. That yep. happened years, uh, 20 years apart, or whatever it was. Well, yeah, more or less. 20 years apart, say. Yep. So how's he, how's that? He, no, you can't use the lighthouse excuse for both of them now. So no. now you've got to. Now he's got to come up with something better than that. Yeah. And I don't think he'll be able to do that. He'll take each one on a, on a case-by-case basis, but will he look at a group of um, things, you know, a group of events? No, I don't think he will. Mm. No. Uh, again. Look at this, right? In December 1972, Eastern Airlines TriStar Jetliner Flight 401 crashed into the Florida swamp. 101 people died in the crash, including the pilot, Bob Loft, and flight engineer, Don Repo. On more than 20 occasions thereafter, crew members of other Eastern Tristars, especially those who had been fitted with parts salvaged from the wreck of 401, saw entirely lifelike apparitions of Loft and Repo. In some cases, the apparitions were identified by people who had known the two men, and in some cases, by reference to the photographs. Mm. So, you know, people have shown them, is this who you saw? Yeah, that's what yep. I saw. And that's just from, that's just from parts of the plane. Yeah, there you go. You so know? This, this, this guy, is, is what you're spurring out is, you know, it's, it's not, you know. Uh, I mean, and I keep saying, when, when I was little, I saw spirit. Yeah, of course I did. So, was that, my mind playing up? Was it tricks of the mind? Was it tricks of my mind when he used to pull the blankets off me and blow me, blow me ear or blow me neck? And I, I, I mean, it must, I must have an absolutely amazing mind uh, when I felt even their breath mm. on my neck. Because I, I, I turned over, I didn't want nothing to do with them. I, I t- and I t- cling onto my blankets. Was that my not, mind? Was that my mind? But you're not. You're fully alert, aren't you? you know I mean, you're not. You're not. I'm frightened. Because I'm frightened. No, no, I'm frightened. So, but I didn't want to disturb me. That's what I mean. The, the problem with these is heightened, mate. You, 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 you're on edge. Your body's on edge. I don't. I mean, I don't know what he does of a weekend or whatever. But oh, and the problem is, right? You, you can freebies. go. You can go forever, right? You can go to a haunted location that's absolutely, yep. you know, yep. uh, these TV shows that go to a haunted location and see somebody like, bang, bang, bang every every time. Well, it's bullshit. Yeah. Right, because it doesn't happen like that. It's impossible mm. for you to go there one night and see something. Yeah, can't happen. It just can't happen. There's... So, so I mean, you know, you could send Joe Nickel, and this is you know probably mm. probably does it all the time. He probably goes to these haunted locations. That's so called. I've been to loads of haunted locations. Mm. I've not seen anything. No, doesn't mean that I come away from there believing that 
I've seen a few things. Like everyone seen... else that's seen something there has no, made it up. No, no, I've seen a few things, quite a few things, but not so much to take my breath away. No, not really, no. It's it's, it's, it's right yeah. time, right place. Yeah, of course it is. At the right time. I mean, as we said before, you know, people see more ghosts in the daytime than yeah. night. Well, yeah. You know, but, so... the, but the TV and that want to make out like it's a it's nighttime a, yeah, thing. Yeah, it's yeah. a spooky thing. Yeah. But... Again, you know, like I was saying before, maybe this maybe there's something to do with our natural uh, rhythm of our body that makes us more susceptible to seeing this shit at night. I don't know. Well, really, or yeah. maybe it's where you're, um, um, you know, you because you, most of the daytime you're focused on something, aren't you? Yeah. You've got something to focus on. Yeah. So it's like uh, UFOs. Mm. You know, people don't generally see UFOs when they're walking to work and mm. when they're you know in town and all that shit. They normally see stuff when they're on their own. Yeah. And and they're looking around. Yeah. Because um, when you're with people, or you, you know, again when you're driving, you're looking up in the sky. You know, tend to look around a bit more. And people in a town or a built-up area don't look in the sky. They're hmm. looking at the phone, looking where they're going, yeah. they're talking to someone, looking for money on the floor. That as well. You know what? So we we, we are not really. You agree with me? We're not night creatures. You know, we're not. We're supposed to be asleep at night. Hmm. Not, I know people got security guards, and a lot of people work through the night. But basically, we're not. We're well, they're not. the people who see this shit. Yeah, yeah. And but people who are, uh, you know, in, in bars and stuff like that yeah. when they're cleaning up at the end of the night. Yeah. And glasses are flying all over. That's it. And yeah, that's it. And we're not. We, you know, we're, we're hospital workers. The hospital workers at night, you know. But we're we, our bodies is not. We don't usually like to sleep. You know, uh, we we like to sleep at night, not to keep awake for all through the night. You know, so there is that. But again. These people get paid just to uh, uh, muddy the water. Yeah, muddy the water. Of course, they're, they're, you know, you got you got you got these people on the internet now. You know, you know the uh, they're in there and they put all you know all the good that comes out. They put all the bad in, mixed into it. You know, that's, the that's trolls. Just, the trolls. Yeah, they you know you, all that good on the YouTube. The trolls come in and put some bad on YouTube. So, but well, you, you're always going to get you people. Think, well, hang on, is that true or not? That or that, you know. You're always going to get people on YouTube trying to. Well, it's off the get, internet. Get a fast book here and there, aren't you? Where, yeah, of course where they you make are. these like these ones that say the most real signing of Bigfoot, and then you look yeah. at it and you can straight away it's like within three seconds. It's yeah. and it like this one where people see ghosts and then um, the the camera doesn't stay on it. Mm. It's like yeah. you know the camera's panning all over you. Think well, if you're seeing that, you ain't moving that camera off. No, no um, unless you're running away, then yeah, yeah maybe. But it's just. I'll put that um, that video that them two guys in that haunted location which I played earlier. I'll put that on the hangout. Is it what I'm saying about you know this part in mind? But then you get oh, is 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 all imagination? Imagination? Is it imagination? So it gets old and whacks you and chucks you across the room. Is that is that imagination? Mm. Or something that you see the door open and then your floorboards. You know the floorboards are creaking. Is that imagination? But that it'd is, be... So it must be. Physical weight, yeah, to I make think the floorboards creak. You know, uh, I you, know what it is anyway. I know that it's ninety nine percent. The problem is, you got ninety nine percent of these videos on YouTube, etc., which is just bullshit. Yeah, they are. And that that is, it's very easy for people to just turn around and say, you know, it's all bullshit based on that, mm. right? Uh, there'll be people listening to this podcast that have had strange experiences, and, and a few of them have shared them with us. Yeah. And a few uh, will share them going forward, hopefully. Remember to send your stories in to, to us at uh, supernaturalpod at gmail.com. Yep. Or get us, you know, hit us up on Facebook. Next week will be a better show. Well, it'll be an even more better show. It's a good show tonight, but I'm saying next week, hopefully, we're gonna, we will go live. So if anybody wants to, yeah, we'll put the dates out, won't we? We'll put the dates out and the time. And uh, if anybody wants to come on, just you know, say hello. You know, say hello to me and Lee, and any questions you got, you know, we'll yeah, bring try your questions. Them. Don't have to be paranormal no, questions. No, could be about anything you anything. want. Anything, anything you want. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll have the girls on next week as well. That be. Re- I'm really looking forward to chatting to the girls. Yeah, um, like I said before, that'll be worth the wait when we actually get, you know, into the yeah show. Like, it'll definitely. definitely worth the wait. Yeah. So, that being said. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Yeah. And uh, we will see you on the other side. Goodbye now. Well, they've gone. No, just for now. It wasn't the right time for us to meet. 
But there'll be other nights, other stars for us to watch. They'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>